Hey everyone, welcome to the optional practice video for the default array lesson. In this one, we'll be talking about data types. Let's jump right in. Here in my Python script, I already have NumPy imported, and I have a few notes about the NumPy data types. We see that we have integer values, we have unsigned integers, which are just positive integer values, and then we have floats. There's a few more that aren't listed here, but these are the ones that we'll deal with the most, mainly integers and floats. The practical understanding of the bit sizes just determines how big or how small your number can be. We see that the integer 16 data type can only effectively specify numbers between these two values. Most of the time you'll be using data types that have the 64 bit size, but let's see what happens when we accidentally overflow a NumPy data type. We'll drop down and create an array. So array A is equal to a NumPy array, and then we'll pass in a list of 32,766, 32,767, and then 32,768. Notice how this number is one above the maximum specification for the integer 16 data type. We'll print array A, and we should have no problem because we know that NumPy will use a data type that accurately describes every element in that array. To print, we'll say Python 3 and default arrays project.py. We see that we have no problem. The array is just how we specified in this line of code. Now let's use a new attribute. We can see the D type of an array with the attribute dot D type. We'll put that in and execute again. And we get back that NumPy has assigned this array a data type of int 64. Since all of our numbers in this array fall between these two huge numbers, we have no problem. But let's see what happens when we change the data type to an int 16. Remember we can do that by setting a keyword argument of D type equal to NumPy dot int 16. We'll save and execute this. We see that we've successfully changed it to an int 16 and now we'll take away this D type attribute. Executing again. When we get back the result we see that we have some unexpected behavior. We now have a negative 32,768 when before we only typed in 32,768 positive. This is because we've overflowed the data type and we only have the ability to do these numbers using that data type. Most of the time you'll never have to worry about this. And in fact, we kind of have to go out of our way to see this happen. That's because NumPy will assign a default data type that will accurately represent your data most of the time. However, it's important to know that we could overflow our data type. So if you start getting unexpected results, check your data type and then make a decision from there. We haven't seen the unsigned data type yet, so let's do that now. We'll drop down and say array b will equal numpy.array and then let's make a list of negative 1, 0, and 1. We'll set this d type equal to np unsigned integer 16. Then we'll print array b. Now when we execute this, we have a signed integer here with the negative 1, but we have an unsigned integer data type. So what do you think happens? And now we see we get some very unexpected behavior because we return 65,535 when we put in negative 1. That's because our unsigned integer data type only takes positive values. So why would you ever want to use it? We might want to use the unsigned integer data type because we have very large numbers that we can't represent with the regular integer data type. That's because all the bit space on the unsigned integers goes into the positive. I don't even know how to begin pronouncing this number, so most of the time you'll never have to worry about this. However, if you are working with extremely large numbers, the data types would be something that you would need to consider. The last note here is that when we call numpy.float, we're just calling the same float data type that's represented in Python. So unless you're working with extremely precise float numbers, calling the np.float or just the regular float will be fine for your purposes. I know this was a short practice video and there's not really a practice problem for it. However, there's a few key takeaways that we can learn from this video. The first is that we are able to overflow a NumPy data type. And whenever this happens, we can get unexpected behavior. The second takeaway is hopefully now we understand why an int32 and an int64 are different values. And it's just because of the bit size allocation in the memory. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please let me know. I'll see you in the next lecture.